Hey guys, it's Amy. Welcome to my couch, because I did not feel like putting up my big lights today. Um, so we're doing something a little bit more informal right now. Um, I tweeted earlier this week and put up on Instagram pictures letting you guys know that I am recording my own audiobook. Yeah! Um, and a lot of people had questions about what it was like, so I thought I would just kind of give you a little behind the scenes uh, look at what it's like to actually record your own audiobook. Okay, I've talked about it before and I will talk about it again. My brand new book, Fighting for Space, comes out on February 18th, 2020. It is the true story of two female pi pilots <laughs> trying to be the first woman in space in the 1960s. It was so much fun to write. And a lot of people were asking whether I would have an audiobook, A, and whether I would be narrating the audiobook. The answer to both questions is yes. So first time around with Breaking the Chains of Gravity, I did not narrate the audiobook. And I got a lot of negative feedback from that. Um, I actually haven't heard it because I can't do audiobooks, I'm way too visual. But I had a lot of people tell me that um, it seemed weird to have my book not in my voice. I mean, I kind of get it. Like, I have the YouTube channel, I've done podcasts, my voice is known. Um, so I never really thought about how weird it would be to have the audiobook not coming from my own voice. So, yeah, when I actually sold Fighting for Space, uh, one of the stipulations with my agent that I put it, like, like, right off the bat was, if there is an audiobook, I want to narrate it. So fast forward to last week, um, we had the conversation of, okay, you can now like, you can narrate it or you can back out and we'll get a professional narrator to do it. And I was like, nope, we're doing it. It's gonna be in my voice. This book was really fun to write. It felt more personal than my first book. It's, this history does not involve me at all, obviously. Um, I am neither a pilot nor was I around in the 60s. Um, but as a woman, as a professional woman writing about professional women, I did feel a much closer connection to this book and I really did want it to be in my voice for you guys. So um, I spent the last five days doing this. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna play the sound because I want to keep all of the actual text of the book a surprise for you guys. Um, so yeah, so here's what narrating an audiobook means. Basically, you go to a recording studio and you sit down in this little ISO booth. So it's probably, I would say it's about the size of like like a shower tub. So, you know, the space of a, a bathtub, but you know, enclosed obviously. And it's got that like soundproofing insulation foam stuff all over the walls. So there's no sound. You're behind two doors, double pane glass in the window so you can see the engineer, but you're just like in this little thing and it's tiny. And in front of you on a music stand is your manuscript. Yes, I, uh, I can't read long, things off of screens without my eyes just like not, I just don't like it. So I printed it out, which, uh, which was fun. So this is what I had in front of me. It's a very long book, guys. It's like 11 hours. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just sit and you just read and you've got headphones on and you can hear yourself reading back and every time you mess something up, you say the wrong word or you fumble or it sounds a little bit slurry, um, you just start again at the top of the sentence. So every time I did it, I'd just say, well, because I'm Canadian, I'd say sorry, and then pick up. <laughs> and then we'd go back to the beginning of the sentence. So what you end up with is basically like an 11 and a half, 12 hour long single cut of my book. So that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna edit it, and then next week, um, I'm gonna go in for any pickups, so any final lines that came out slurry, or I mispronounced something, or, uh, you know, I, you know, you know when you read something and then you just like say something totally different? Any one of those. <laughs> um, so basically, it's quality control. And then from there, it will be edited and put together and available on February 18th with the hardcover and also uh, ebook editions. The other thing you'll notice in this video, you can see the like the constant sips of water. The other thing that was like weirdly hard for me is, you know that feeling when like your mouth gets tacky from talking so long? Like if you've ever given a talk or if you're a teacher and you've sort of been in front of a class for an hour and a half and haven't had a drink of water, that made me slurry and like I could hear it in my voice and there's certain words, like everyone has the words they trip over. Unfortunately for me, it's the word exploration, because <laughs> space exploration is not a phrase I have to say all the time. Um, so yeah, I had to keep taking like tiny sips of water to like keep my mouth from like sounding tacky, because you could hear it so clearly on my headphones that it was just like, I would do things again and so I was like, That's, that sounded weird. My cadence is off, my mouth sounded weird. It was really weird. <laughs> so you guys asked some questions. 
Am I narrating the entire audiobook? Yes, I am. From the preface through to the author's note at the end, um, which I will say in this case, it was tough call, but go all the way to the author's note in this book. It is actually very important. Um, all the way to the, like, the, the, this has been a production of, like, ad read thing. So yeah, I did the entire thing. Do you find that you'd like to rephrase parts once you read them out loud? Oh my god, yes. The number of times, the number of times I was reading a sentence and just like, well, that's clunky, like, couldn't get it out. And I'm just like, why can't I say this? It's not that hard. And it's like, I wish I could reword this. But alas, um, I can only make vital changes. So conveniently, uh, the time frame of the audiobook recording coincides with my last chance to check page proofs for any repeated words, any typos, anything like that. So I did, um, I did have a pen in my hand the entire time and I marked things that were wrong. Um, you know, ins that should be an of, whatever. Like, they're all really minor things, but I did highlight a couple sentences where I'm just like, oh my god, I hate the way this sounds. Um, but it's not vital, so I don't think we can change it. But yeah, there's definitely things where I'm like, oh, this just feels redundant and I'm not happy with this paragraph right now. But you can't change it, so it's there. Yay. <laughs> uh, is this part of the process tedious or boring for you? It wasn't, you know, it wasn't boring at all. It was, it was good. It, I liked feeling like it was me doing the audiobook. Like I, I liked, it was a, it was an important part and I liked that. So it wasn't, I didn't really find it boring. It was more like stressful having to listen to my own voice in my ears for five days. Does it feel strange reading your book or does it feel like a longer version of your video? Definitely different than a video, so I don't have scripts for my videos. I have notes. Usually I have the blog post done beforehand, so I have notes that I can look at, um, but I try not to actually script my videos. So my videos are a little bit more relaxed and feel a little bit more natural, whereas the book is obviously like you have to pause a certain length at sentences and you have to really watch cadence. I know I speak fast, guys, and I was very careful about this on the audiobook. Um, so it was very different. It was a very different experience. and. Um, happiest that I don't have to edit it because like editing my videos is tough. I can't imagine having to do the whole audiobook. Thanks editors. How is your voice doing after all that reading? We finished a couple days ago so my voice is fine now but I definitely felt the strain. I actually studied voice years and years ago like pre-university and I had that same feeling of like the vocal cord muscles being sore after the end of a long day because we went from about 10 a.m. to 2 or 3 p.m. on average um, with a break for lunch but that's a lot of talking and a lot of like like concentrated talking so yeah it did it did get like I was aware of the strain in my voice but I didn't lose it or anything so that was good. Will Pete provide the prologue? Sadly no. I could not bring him to the studio with me. Any chance it'll be out on Audible? Related, who is the audiobook publisher for Australia so I know where to look for it, and by extension, other regions aside from North America? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Audible. I'm not sure. I don't do ebooks, so I can't tell you where it's going to be, and we have not discussed foreign rights yet, so I'm not sure. Um, as soon as I have any information, I will definitely share it with you guys. Um, I've got links in the description of where you can go to pre-order the book, and that should also have the information about the audiobook. Amazon will likely have information about the audiobook as well, because Audible is part of Amazon, I believe. Um, and if you do want the physical discs, I think it's being done that way as well which is also something that you can pre-order through your retailer of choice. Where do we get a signed copy of your book? We're working on a way to de-sign copies. I don't have any of that information for you guys yet, but as soon as I do, I'll be sharing it. Don't worry, uh, we will have availability in the next uh, in the next few weeks and all leading up to uh, release in February. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, be sure to check Twitter because I'll definitely be tweeting all of that stuff as well. All right, that's it. I just wanted to give you guys that little uh, behind the scenes look at what it's like to record an audiobook and also just make sure you guys know that I did record my entire audiobook. Um, all like 110,000 or so words. It's a really long book. It's going to be like 11, 11 or 12 hours they're estimating. It's so long. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy it with all my, my voice cracks and Canadian accent. Um, one thing that was really funny that I should share with you guys, we had to, you know, you come to a word that 
you need to make sure you pronounce it right. So I learned about this website called Youglish that pronounces words. But then I also had to be like, okay, we're just gonna make a note that I have the, the Canadians-ness and some of the words are gonna come out accented. And you guys have given me a lot of a hard time for this. Uh, missile, which I do not know where that one came from for me because that's very British and it's not Canadian. Um, but there are certain words that I'm like, I can't say it as with an American pronunciation consistently. So it's very consistently like my mission mash of like Canadian and British pronunciations in certain words. So it'll be fun. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope this was an interesting little like behind the scenes look at what it takes to narrate an audiobook. Again, all of your links for pre-orders are in the description below and be sure to follow me on Twitter um, because I will definitely be tweeting all of my stuff as we get closer to publication in terms of like availability for audiobooks, for ebooks, for sign books, and just regular book books and all events coming up and stuff too. So um, that's about it for me for now. Bye guys.